John wants to know, what's the real science behind trying to cut down on salt? Um, it's complicated, but the bottom line is cut down on it. Uh, there are some studies now which are showing that if you don't have enough, you actually uh, knock up your, high, your blood pressure high. I'm not confident of that. The overall overwhelming amount of science is that we have more in our society, we have more salt than we need. You ever watch those cooking shows? Hey, I'll tip in a half a kilogram of sugar, then I'll tip in a half a kilogram of salt to counteract it, and then you're really thirsty. And whenever we go out to restaurants, um, gee, I'm really thirsty, I'll drink another glass. I'm really thirsty, I'll drink another glass. And you drink all these glasses of water and you're not urinating because you're just diluting out that salt. And you suddenly put on all that extra volume and it's just sitting in your body and it's doing bad things to your blood pressure system. In general, you don't need extra salt, but on the other hand, look, a bit of salt is the salt of life. It, it, it is good for you. A little bit is good, but too much is bad. Mike grows chilies, which he believes are very high in vitamin C. Uh, should one limit the amount of chilies one eats? Basically, stop when parts of your face are paralysed and you are sweating like a hose. Because my son and I had a competition to eat hotter and hotter chilies and we kept on working our way up via the Asian food markets. And when we got to the stage where this area, because he's related to me by DNA and so forth, we had these same symmetrical areas on our face with no sensation. So I'm saying, it feels numb. I say, oh, let's do the knife test. So we've got the sharp tip of a knife and you go sharp, 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 pressure, 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 sharp. And we, we mapped it out, we drew it with the text, the colour, and we had the same identical areas of loss of sensation. At that stage, stop eating. It has been found that chilies have got a whole bunch of benefits, but once again, you, you don't have to be stupid like we were. Vitamin C, basically, have as much vitamin C as your guts can handle. Now, I'm lucky, just through pure genetic good luck. I did nothing to deserve it, uh, and maybe the bacteria in my gut as well. But the, I can handle 10, 15 grams of vitamin C a day. I used to buy the pure white powder. Some people can only have one or two, and then their guts go to lunch on them. Whatever your body tells you. Bob writes, last September, I had a triple bypass. Apparently there was no damage to my heart. So, okay, so uh, he's saying that there was no damage to the heart muscle. By the way, the heart muscle, about this big, pumps the weight of three giant American nuclear-powered aircraft carriers in your life. Quarter of a million tonnes. For something weighing about 100 grams, to pump quarter of a million tonnes of blood is a good job. Okay, so he's saying that he had no damage to his heart. Okay, maybe, go on. I'm very well, I ride, walk, go to the gym. My cholesterol is low and blood pressure is good. Good. So now that my plumbing is as good as new, isn't my general health better than prior to my heart attack? Why then am I now given endless instructions as to what to eat? And am I somehow a different person now that I've had this operation? See, I don't have a full medical history. I can't give a, I cannot give an opinion without a full medical... I don't know, his surgical history, his orthopaedic history, his pharmacology, I don't know. But, yeah, he made, eat food, mostly vegetables, not too much. Charles has a question. I'm no longer eating wheat, eggs or milk due to intolerances. Will this affect my platelet levels, which are high? Basically, I want to reduce my platelet levels with diet. Uh, will it affect his platelet levels? You'd have to talk to a haematologist. I don't know of a link... I'm not, I don't know enough, but a haematologist would give him the answer. Luckily, we live in Australia where we have high quality, in general, high quality and very cheap medical system. Ask your GP. And by the way, here's some advice for guys. Have one GP who knows you and who knows your body. Do not go to a different GP every time because if that happens, you fall, things fall between the cracks. You want to have one person who knows you and knows your body and then can help run you through life. So for that one, I'd say go to a haematologist. OK, now we've got some, some interesting health questions. Lay them on me. How do you measure a man's testosterone level by looking at his hand? Uh, ratio of the second and fourth fingers. It turns out that the hormones are generated early on, oestrogen and testosterone generated early on in utero. And they affect the extremities of the body, the genitals, male, female, and the hands. And the way that they work is the ratio of the second finger and the fourth finger. 
So that's the first finger. Second, third finger is the middle finger. Fourth finger is ne next to the little finger. And finally, the little finger. If the fourth finger is longer, that means you have a higher testosterone level. Longer than the, the second, finger. second finger. Comparing the, in my case, you can see that they're, but that's only a rough guide. Mm -hmm. The research was done by Professor Manning, M A W N I N G. Look up Manning. But you can see in my case that the second and fourth fingers are about the same. My second and fourth fingers are about the same, and I've got three children, one of each sex. So really, uh, it's a soft finding. But you can tell by the hands a little bit. It's part of the overall thing of being a doctor. It's a small factor that you put in the overall clinical picture. Jack wants to know. Do men fart more than women? Yes, they do. Why? Don't know. <laughs> Average is 14 times a day, slightly over for men, slightly under for women. Maybe, don't know, don't know. Total volume, half a litre.